Hi guys, welcome to the channel. This particular video, we're talking about loosening up with your watercolours a little bit. So this is going to be a little bit of a talk about how underlying patterns, underlying shapes of light and shadow can actually, whilst being a little bit more logical, give us a lot more freedom with the paint. And then I'm going to be talking a lot more about the kind of mindset and a few techniques and approaches whilst we're actually painting to create lots of loose, lovely flowing colours within these shapes of tone these shapes of light and shadow. And I'm also going to touch a little bit on the use of more arbitrary colour. So this is colour that is just kind of not quite put in for the sake of it, but it's colour that is not true to the subject. We're kind of injecting our own little bit of life and character. Let's have a very quick bit of theory and then we'll dive into the painting. Okay guys, so whenever I'm looking at any subject, I'm looking for simple patterns of light and shadow. I'm looking for large underlying tonal values or areas of similar or the same tone that we can kind of link together. So that's my first sort of port of call. And this one, they're fairly obvious and this gigantic shape here. And it doesn't matter whether it's the ear, the face, the body, the horn. <laughs> when we look at things in terms of shapes uh, and also tone, all of these shapes start to link together and that for me becomes one big shape. So this is probably the one of the bigger shapes or the bigger shadow shapes of the painting and it's going to provide underlying structure. Then when we combine that with another pretty massive shape of similar tone here and if you ignore the smaller shapes for a moment that are within it, that kind of becomes one massive shape there as well. Okay, so yes, there are smaller shapes within it. Yes, there's there's more subtlety and variegation of tone and, and colour in there, but these two big shapes are what provide the underlying structure to the design of this painting. We then have other large shapes, so the, the light area is its own shape but you'll generally find that the shadows are what provide the structure and hold everything together so those are two big shapes and this one almost drifts into here as well but I'm kind of imagining that as a bit of like a separate kind of medium sized shape uh, and then we've got a couple of smaller shapes in here but you can see once you start breaking it up into these underlying shapes and asking yourself is it a light area or is it a shadow area everything becomes a lot simpler and actually you see that a good design in a painting whatever the subject is made up of pretty much only a handful of big shapes and as long as these big shapes remain the structure of the painting remains sound and this underlying structure is what gives you the freedom with the way that you use the pigment so we can really throw the pigment around work very very wet into wet not only within the light area maybe in a first wash or an early wash very very wet in here all over the place really as long as we leave some nice whites of the page to provide uh, some liveliness and some structure uh, and don't go too dark too quickly and then when we put the shadow shapes on top of that as long as these shapes are accurate where they need to be and there's a sensitivity to the tone and I use a framework of painting the gentle shadow first and then I drop into that the darker shadow while it's still wet as long as these remain relatively intact we can choose whatever colour we want we can chuck in all sorts of crazy colours as long as the tone is roughly correct and they hold together and we can really throw the paint around working really wet into wet chucking loads of paint at it, really letting the medium do its thing within the structure and the framework of these shapes and within the structure and the framework of working generally with some lighter tones first, then building in our shadows, generally building in the gentle shadow first to establish the shape, slowly dropping in our deep, rich, creamy darks as that begins to dry. With that, we also get lots of kind of soft, lost fuzzy edges in the shadows and that's going to contrast nicely with the stronger lights in other areas. Let's dive into the painting. So here I'm laying in the light family. I'm not really paying too much attention to colour because it's all about tone as long as I keep it nice and light. I'm kind of playing with the idea of let's start warm and see where this takes us. So oranges and, and reds but quite quickly to kind of throw something literally a little bit different at it, I chuck in a bit of blue as well. 
and it always looks a bit scary but when we're working with this much water and I'm also working on a slight tilt it's a it's going to stay very light it's going to dry even lighter and everything kind of sorts itself out and works itself out the problems tend to arise when we go too dark too thick with the pigment too quickly without any specific reason almost by accident and you can see by the time the water and the pigment gets down to the bottom of the page, I'm just kind of washing it together. Final few touches of a very opaque turquoise blue. I tend to stay away from doing too much of this in a first stage if I plan to wash over the top because it can be tricky glazing over the top of opaque colours at times, not always. So that's our light family. Whites of the page, lots of lovely flowing colours. And I'm now into the gentle shadow. So, so I'm using the slightly lighter shadow tone to establish these really big underlying shapes that I was talking about and I actually decide to link them together even more um, than I than I spoke of in the intro so that's a really big shape established the, the first gigantic underlying structure of the painting the foundation is now in refine the way that the shadow meets the light in places then when I'm happy with everything I come back in with a much deeper or darker shadow, so a creamier paint consistency. And I'm ver very much working kind of damp into damp here. This is to encourage the medium to do a lot of the work for me. I want the medium to be flowing together. I want the pigment to be playing around and doing its thing because ultimately we're working alongside the medium rather than always forcing it and working directly with it. We're working alongside it. I focus on big, simple shapes of light and shadow I focus on paint consistency, but I also let the medium take care of a lot of the work for me. It will create subtlety and variegation when we allow it to. You can see as I move around the shadow shapes, working wet into wet and damp into damp, I'm naturally creating variegation and subtlety of colour and tone and nuance of colour and tone by just changing the mixture ever so slightly every time I go to the palette. This particular one I'm really kind of pushing this idea to the max I'm almost changing the color every time I pick a new one up and you'll see I then charge or load the existing wash on the page with slightly creamier thicker pigment to change the color and the tone then once I'm really happy with where things are set then I finally commit to like the deepest richest darks this is very strong creamy almost neat pigment dropped in and then to keep things lively I'm using a couple of more opaque colors like the permanent red the turquoise you've seen me throw in. Chucking those opaque colours into a damp wash often produces some really interesting effects and this is kind of in keeping with this slightly looser approach. But it's always understanding that the underlying structure of light and shadow, the underlying design created by the big shapes of similar or same tonal value are what are giving me this freedom. If I jump straight to crazy colour without any consideration for the shapes and the tones and how it's all holding together as one design that's when things can go a little bit wrong but if I kind of have an appreciation of how this creates the structure of the painting and it makes the painting work from that solid foundation then I can play I can experiment I can throw the brush around with lots of pigment lots of water use lots of big brushes uh, and really play around with color as well leaving then within the framework of these big shapes then leaving the medium to do its thing and right at the end the stage I'm at here is being careful not too careful but just picking and choosing being selective with my smaller shapes and my little bits of detail where am I going to refine certain areas and then don't forget of course the background can be a big shape in itself and in this case I'm using it to further trap the light on the main subject I'm using it to carve out the light using the negative shape of the background to form the positive shape of the animal and one last little thing here considering kind of light and shadow design notice how the left hand side of the animal as we look at I've kind of painted it so that there's a lot of light trapped by the dark shadow of the background but notice how then on the right hand side of the animal as we look at it I've created this very strong shadowy silhouette against a lighter background so we've kind of got this counter change of light and shadow so there's very very simple design principles and design elements going on here using similar shapes or shapes of similar tonal value but the consideration for these shapes and the way that they work has been thought out 
not to any great extent, but it's kind of happened just before I started painting. And then I continue to keep these ideas in my mind as I paint. And as I said, that's what gives me the freedom to experiment and to play. There we go, guys. As always, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that you found it useful. Maybe it gave you some ideas for how you might like to loosen up your own watercolours and a couple of ways to do this, kind of that mixture of sort of underlying painting principles, but also a little bit of an insight in the kind of mindset that we need to loosen up. If you'd like to see the full length version of this particular painting, you can hop over to my online watercolour school. There's a new tutorial released every couple of weeks over there, loads of techniques and tips videos. The library is ever growing, including a kind of back catalogue of some of my older videos from my Patreon channel. Whatever experience level you're currently at or whatever place on your watercolour journey, if you're looking to gain some clarity and direction with your learning, you've got some frustrations that maybe you want to break free, you just want to take your watercolours to the next level, uh, I definitely recommend checking this out. In the meantime, guys, happy living and happy painting. I'll catch you very soon. <laughs>